Hello, hello, hello. It's 12.30 on a Thursday, so we are together. I am Dr. Stephanie Fine, and I love talking to you about all things maintenance. Weight loss maintenance. As Chief Physician of Maintenance University, this is where you come to make sure you're keeping your weight loss just where you want it, in the body you love. And today, it is raining outside. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a it's like a sort of a dreary day. And what the uh, topic today is silver linings, which indicates some um, light and hope in there. Well, we're still gonna create it. <laughs> so the idea being that what are the silver linings of quarantine? Because we're in about week four of quarantine. We're home, flattening the curve, making sure that everyone is safe as our global community has to deal with this uh, coronavirus. And good for you for doing that, by the way. Awesome job, not easy. And you know, the beginning was um, sort of shocking and now we're sort of settling in because we have weeks and weeks and weeks left to do this. And so w this week I wanted to talk about the advantages, the things you could take advantage of, you could look at as good, good practice for your weight loss and maintenance because we that's what we talk about here. And the three of them are cooking at home, exercise as a privilege, and the definition of enough. So those are the three things. And if you go to uh, your Ounce of Prevention blog, which you can get every morning, every Thursday morning, if you just sign up, go to stephaniefinemd.com. You can sign up there. And th those are the three benefits that we're experiencing right now because of quarantine, cooking, exercise as a privilege, and defining enough. So we're gonna talk a little bit about each. One is the cooking, OMG. When we're forced to cook, there's some skills we're learning there, right? Uh, as Americans, we really got used to sort of dr picking up, driving through, you know, um, going out to eat, and learning, polishing off these cooking skills is excellent because a restaurant meal is so many more calories than a home-cooked meal every time. This cooking at home is brilliant for maintenance and weight loss. Absolutely brilliant. You can control your portions. You can control what goes into the food. You can, um, and what I think this is showing us is how easy it is. Now, I'm not saying it's super, de super de duper easy or else we would be doing it, but I think we got into a habit that we didn't need to get into in terms of getting all our meals out. So having a, a repertoire of meals that you can cook at home that you enjoy that work out just fine that aren't don't take a million years you know that that your family enjoys that's really important so my major advice about this is write them down put them on a piece of paper that you can tack up in a cupboard or on the refrigerator or somewhere in the kitchen so that you know you have let's say 10 meals that work really well for dinner five meals that work really well for lunch. And then you have them and you will have them when all this is over and you can go back out again. I know there'll be a time when we wanna eat every meal out, but learning how to eat in is a very important skill for maintenance and weight loss. And you're getting better and better at it. And using this time to hone in is fantastic. And especially since we're, we're trying not to go to the market very often, so making uh, planning your meals and marketing for a week at a time is, a, again, a great practice, a great skill. So this is a time for, you know, again, silver lining. We wouldn't choose to have to do this, but because we're in this situation, we can learn and use this skill going forward. Okay, so that's really important. Second one is, Exercise is a privilege. When we're home, it's so nice. When we're stuck at home, we have to be at home, it's so nice to be able to go out once or twice a day to go for a walk. And seeing movement and seeing the benefits in terms of your brain and your body, so important. And we get to see it in a new light. It's a, it's a privilege. And if we take that idea that moving our body every day, clearing our mind outside, is a privilege, then we will continue it and we will make time for it when we're done with this. And you can see how those two things, you can actually lose weight during this time. You see how that can happen, right? But now we're gonna talk about the last one, which is 
the most important one and the one that requires a lot of um, good thinking around this. And it is the idea of enough. So we're redefining enough. When we have all that we want at all times, we I think we get a little um, complacent or lazy about um, how much we need. Like wasting isn't as much of a big deal or and it, because there's plenty. Well, there's still plenty. I, there's st things are still out there, but we have an overlying idea that we need to be more careful, that we need to be careful with what our body needs. And I'm, I'm talking about food right now, but certainly we could talk about other things, but um, so that overeating has a different meaning and um, wasting has a different meaning so that we get to define for ourselves what's enough, what is satisfying, not making us full. So that we don't wanna, if we go grocery shopping once a week, we don't wanna eat all the groceries by a certain day and have to go out again when we weren't planning on it, that sort of thing. When you practice this, and this idea is um, honorable restraint as opposed to deprivation. So if we were in different time, not quarantine, and we were saying, oh, you know what, you really should f find out what's enough and not, and we could get into that mindset where we feel deprived. Why do we have to be deprived? Why can't I have it? What? But if the exact same um, circumstance, but we think about it a little differently, when I am using proper restraint, not I'm only eating crumbs and I'm gonna waste away, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about having a meal and then stopping. That can be honorable restraint, meaning I am doing something that's helping me and my family and truly my community and the world. I mean, it is really, really what's going on when you, when you decide to stay indoors because you're only having your one week's worth of, of food. It's an honorable thing to do, as opposed to thinking of it as depriving yourself. Isn't that amazing that depending on the circumstances outside, we can trick our brain into thinking something that's the exact same thing as either deprivation or honorable restraint. Practicing that idea will get you in a place where you're eating just enough, enough for you. Like you're hungry, you eat, you're satisfied, awesome. When you can practice that for three meals every day during these weeks and weeks, you have an, an, another incredible maintenance skill. Incredible. And the other thing that's helpful during this time too, that if you practice it but it's hard or there's still overeating or emotional eating or eating after dinner or any of that, you then can identify it so easily. You know precisely when you're overeating. You know precisely when you're emotionally eating. The value of that is then you can work on that. You can, you can see that clearly as an issue and you can start to do what you can about it. And uh, at stephaniefinemd.com, you can download a, a workbook for how to cope without eating everything in sight. I highly recommend you look at that if emotional eating is a problem right now, which for many of us it is. But these other ideas of honorable restraint, exercise as a privilege, and honing your cooking skills are gonna take you so far, not only now, which we need right now, but when this is over, which it absolutely will be. And then you'll come out of it without extra weight and with these amazing skills that you didn't have before. What's enough? What does my body need? How can I plan? I can do more meals at home, saving money and time and all the rest of that stuff. So it's, those are the silver linings. Now I wanted to say one more thing about silver linings. It is not necessary that you turn every terrible situation into a happy, happy one. But there is benefit to spending some time looking for the good. So it's not that we're trying to make everything seem happy and wonderful when it isn't, but there are some good things. There are some skills to be learned. There are some things to take with you into the post-quarantine time. And it's important to look at them, but it's also important to um, be in reality. So what I wanna say is, 
I had written this and I was, you know, positive and thinking silver linings. And then um, I think I went to the grocery store and that day was just hard. It was just hard to be out and see people who were there on the front lines. God bless them. And all the people in masks and everything. It's, it's, um, it, it, and, and then, you know, I mean, forget looking at the news and the numbers and all that sort of thing. So uh, it's important to be able to um, be with yourself and your feelings and to look for the things that are going to be helpful to you. Both. We don't have to only go into a little ball and shovel Cheetos in our mouth. We can stop eating the Cheetos. You know what I mean? Like maybe we started eating the Cheetos, but we can close up the bag and we can call a friend. And the calling of the friend doesn't even have to be for ourselves. It could be to cheer them up. So I just wanted to talk about balance between the bad news and the good news. There is some good news. I want you to look for it. Also, I've talked about this before and I will continue to talk about this. Please have a limit on your news consumption. I beg of you, please do that. It's great if you want to be informed, fantastic. But there is a recovery period. When you hear the bad news, of course your brain is going to go into, I mean, it, it, it's natural. You're hearing it. There are, you can get scared and have fearful thoughts and worry. That is completely normal. But then if we stay there, then that's our whole day. So if we have a limit on the news and we figure out, okay, what's going on? Do I need to do anything different? Okay, who do I need to call? Okay, I, I figured that out. Then we have to balance it with some uplifting information. And that could be anything you think is uplifting. You can look at kitten videos. You can um, listen to motivational speakers. You can read the Bible. You know, there's a million different things that you can do that are that's uplifting. But at the very least, if you have 15 minutes of news, I want you to have 15 minutes of uplifting stuff, okay? An hour, an hour. Because there's a transition time to get your brain out of the, the gutter, the, the deep well, okay? So it's natural to be afraid when we learn bad things. And also we have to, it's up to us to get ourselves out of that space and we can do that by not living in the, the news 24 seven, okay? So there are silver linings, but we don't have to force them. And you're doing such a good job because you're around and we're flattening the curve and we're keeping healthy as best we can. We're washing our hands. We are staying indoors. You are doing a great job. There are some benefits, look for them. And uh, practice enough. Practice enough. You will be amazed with what you can do for yourself. I'm sending so much love and I will see you next week. Bye.